Today I hope to answer the question, what a trap dipole is. So we may have an instance where we want to install an antenna and we want to have a single wire that runs from some point A to point B and we've affixed it uh, with some dog bones or whatever. And we want to operate on multiple frequencies on that single wire element. In general, we calculate the length for a particular dipole here. In my case, it's going to be 14 megahertz, which is the 20 meter band. And instead of a dipole, I'm actually going to, need to uh, add this to my monopole. And if you haven't seen that video, click the link up above and um, you can see the details of how I constructed that. For right now, it's configured for 20 meters and I want to add 40 meters to it. So what I'm going to do is basically remove this half of the antenna, keep this half and just arrange it vertically. So we calculate the length for 20 meters, which happens to be about 16 feet uh, on each leg. Like I said, I'm doing a vertical, so it's only going to be one side. Um, and then if we want to operate on another frequency, we can install what's called the trap. Now a trap is basically a tuned LC circuit. It's just an inductor in, par in parallel with a capacitor. And the resonant frequency of that circuit is 1 over 2 pi the square root of LC. L being your inductor and C being your capacitor. Now as we turn up the frequency, to 14 megahertz, this antenna resonates, this center section, the shortest section. Now this, if we tune it to the same frequency that this is operating at, it presents a high impedance at that particular frequency within a certain bandwidth. How is that useful? Well, it's like adding a big, a large value resistor between this section and this section of wire. So it effectively cuts out this guy and just resonates, your antenna can resonate at this 14 megahertz, which is what I want. Now, as soon as I tune out of band, uh, depending on if I'm above or below the resonant frequency of that tank circuit, if I'm below, it looks capacitive to uh, this portion of the antenna. If it's greater than resonance, it looks inductive. All right. So what does that mean? That means that whatever length of wire I have here looks like a loaded antenna. Loaded meaning there's an inductance primarily here. So whatever this part is tuned for, it'll be physically shorter than what we calculate uh, for a regular dipole or monopole. In my case, this is going to be the 7 megahertz or the 40 meter band, and I can just stick another 16 feet on either end. I know because of this inductor that I'm going to make, it's going to actually be physically shorter. So I'll just uh, put another 16 feet out here, and uh, then we'll just trim it back and, and tune it with the antenna analyzer. Oh, I forgot, I've drawn a vertical antenna and this is basically what it's going to look like. So I've got a 14 megahertz section here, the 16 feet of wire, and then I'm going to have my coil at the center wrapped around um, this PVC pipe, okay? And that'll just slide over the, uh, the smaller diameter tubing on my antenna. And then I'll have the remainder of that section for the 7 megahertz, the 40 meter band, sitting on top. And like I said, we'll just trim it back. I have not installed the radials out in the backyard yet, so I'm waiting on some uh, spikes uh, to affix the ends here uh, into the lawn. So back in the old days, they used to use an inductor and a physical capacitor in parallel. The problem is you have a lot of high circulating currents in the tank circuit, and uh, the capacitors used to blow up, catch on fire, all that kind of good stuff. So if we have an inductor, right, we have a coil of wire, and the more turns, the more inductance you get, and the diameter uh, plays into that. So I'm not going to go over the calculation. There's plenty of online calculators for that. And if you have a capacitor, you have two metal plates in parallel. If you look at this coil, what do we have? A bunch of metal wires in parallel. Okay, so we have a parasitic capacitance between each winding. Um, if we have many turns of wire, we, have, we end up with a distributed capacitance along its length. So at a certain frequency, this becomes self-resonant, all right? So what we're gonna do is wind this up on, you know, my constraint is the diameter of this tube, so I'm gonna wind it until I hit 14 megahertz, okay? And that's gonna be my resonant frequency of my trap. A word of advice is to not tune this to the center of the band, because when you transmit at the same frequency that this is resonant at, you're gonna get very large circulating currents, large heat loss uh, because of the I squared R law, okay? So you tune this thing to be just outside of the band. Um, most of the documentation that I've found online says it needs to be resonant just below the band um, or just above. There's no real clear information on which is better. So I'm going to wind this, and as I do, I'm going to take measurements with a grid dip meter. So this is uh, the MFJ203. It's basically the same thing as a regular dip meter, except you don't have all the plug-in coils. This just has a, a single plug-in coil. It's supposed to work on 
all frequencies, which it does to a certain extent. So how you use this is you place it into the coil and you can change the frequency. I think there's a Colpitz oscillator or something in here. It's transmitting that RF through this coil. All right. Now this one picks it up, it gets absorbed by that coil and you'll see a dip in this meter. So if I tune this guy, I don't know how to do this so you can see it. I'm going to just turn this and if you watch the dip meter, you will be able to see when I'm at the resonant frequency of this coil. And as I turn it, you can see it starts to dip. And when it starts to come back up, I know I'm out of band. So there's resonance right about there. And I will just use this Radio Shack one that I have. It's actually uh, pretty accurate. And from what I understand, it was designed by a ham. I don't have his name or call sign uh, ready, but this is still transmitting on the frequency that I just had. So if I put that in the coil, you can see it's resonant at 15.4 megahertz. All right. Or I can plug this right into a scope and it'll tell me the frequency. So that's how we're going to tune it. So anyway, with this and some number 16 AWG is what this is, uh, magnet wire or enameled wire, if you want to call it that, we will start winding our coil. All right, so the way that we do this is we bring the coil into the center of the coil we're trying to measure, and we're actually loading the coil down right now, um, which is going to change the resonant frequency. Um, so the next measurement we're going to do, we're going to take it out till it barely dips on the meter, and that's going to be our actual frequency. All right, so we dipped over there. I'm going to take it further out, tune it again, further out. Okay, I found my resonant frequency. So we are at 14.5. Can you see that? 14.5, 40.6. That's right at the upper edge of the uh, 20 meter band. So I think that'll do. So here's a view of the antenna on the ground. Raising and lowering this thing several, several times to trim it uh, was a little frustrating. Traps are frustrating. I can attest to that. Okay, so I've added about another 10 turns and you know what, let me set this up so you guys can see it. Same process as before, I'm just gonna scan across the band right in front of the coil. Aha, and this time we are right at the upper edge of the band. Now I think it's okay uh, being right there. I may, I don't have a lot of room left on that piece of pipe. I might have to cut another one if this doesn't work, but it looks like we're pretty good now. So let's go ahead and throw this back on the antenna and see how it performs. My radial is right there. And I've put a hole in the grass right here. So we're going to just pop that down. Let's get our radials out. I'm using these guys to radials out with. This is a quarter wave on 40 meters. It's one. All right, three more to go. This is some DX10 I've borrowed from the DX Commander kit that Callum has sent me. So thank you, Callum. I sure appreciate it. 
I will do a video on your antenna very soon. Okay, so here's the setup. I've got a little bit of overhang here on the wire so that it can slip over that and reach down to the bottom. Um, and you can see successive telescoping sections on the fiberglass tubing there. 20 meter here. We've got our 50 turns of our trap right here and some heat shrink tubing, everything is soldered together. And a very short section here for the 40 meter band, which is going to give us a narrow bandwidth, but this loading coil um, definitely shortens that a lot. So I'm not sure how that's going to perform. We'll see. I thought it was going to be that long, and it's not. Anyway, let's put this thing together and take a reading. Being an experimental platform, I wanted a way to just quickly raise and lower it. This seemed to make the most sense. It slips over there. Let's get our antenna analyzer here. Shield goes to ground. Center conductor to my antenna. I know you can't see that, but we'll take it inside in a second. Alright, so we're just on the edge of the 40 meter band here. 2 to 1 SWR, not that great, I'm not sure what's going on. And the 20 meter band, we are right in the middle, which is great. 1.42 at 14 megahertz. Alright, let's go trim that top section. See what that does. Take another measurement. All right, so it looks like we're still good on uh, 20 meters, 40 meters. We're at the upper edge of the band, which is okay. Um, I was getting a better SWR before, so I might have to just check the connections and make sure everything is nice and solid. It might be that it's next to that uh, Jubilee clip or cable tie, whatever you want to call it. So this is just our temporary location, how oh, we're tuning it. And uh, I'm tempted to just slingshot an antenna up in the tree there to make it easy on myself. But this is going to be the permanent installation. In an HOA, I have to keep things hidden. So, let's start with 16 ground radials, eight on this side, another eight in the back of the woods there, which I'm not too excited about exploring. We just had an alligator in a neighbor's pool. I almost encountered a couple of bears when I was going for a walk the other day. And of course, snakes, which we've seen before, so, should be interesting. Alright, next time we'll throw this thing on the uh, mount over there after I get my ground radio set up and we'll uh, we'll give it a test. As it stands right now everything looks pretty darn good. So let's take this down. <laughs>